Um, this is Jenkins Doc's Office Hours. It's the 9th of November, 2020. Uh, Jonathan has let me know he won't be here today, so glad to have everybody here. Topics proposed, action items, progress on Jenkins IO pull requests, look at the data, Docker changes to use the official image. Vlad, you okay sharing your current status on that? Uh, yeah, I can just talk a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Jonathan's out. So what's new next after Hacktoberfest is I think still a worth worthwhile topic. Maybe I'll take that one and we'll spend some time on it discussing and brainstorming. Any other topics we need to add to the list of agenda items? Okay, so first topic, reminder of action items. I took the action item last week and didn't do anything with it. So let's put it for me this week. I actually do it, sorry about that. Uh, what'll happen I think is it we may shift this one hour later in the day to get us on UTC. Um, is that okay for you, Vlad? Is that okay for you, Meg? That would be right at the same time we had it before, I think, when Jonathan was meeting with us, avoid changing his time. Or is this time much better for the two of you and better to do it now than an hour later? Um, well, for me, it uh, doesn't matter much, but I thought hour later would be out of your uh, normal business hours, is it not correct, Mark? Would be, but that's the, the challenge of having meetings in UTC. I don't mind that, that's fine. Office hours outside of working time is, is not uncommon. Yeah, so yeah, I would be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And Meg, any, any feedback from you there on timing? Okay, no response. That's fine. We'll go ahead. Great. All right, next topic, progress on the Jenkins IO pull requests. So here we've got Jenkins, GitHub, Jenkins.io. We are down to only 31 pull requests pending. So that's good. And several of those are brand new, brand new pull requests. So we're making reasonable progress and things are improving. So 31 and there are 116 open issues, which is a slight increase, but we've made progress on issues as well. I did take a look. Last week it was suggested to look at the redirect pull requests to see if there were easy, easy ones to resolve. And I was surprised that most of them have some other dependency. So they aren't just trivial, trivial changes. And that's okay. It just means we've got more, uh, there's more work to do before they can be, they have, they have another merge required. So there's more work before we can merge them. Anything else on pull requests? All right, Vlad, you wanna share with us how progress is going on Docker changes to use the official image? Uh, yes, absolutely. So just uh, to remind everybody, uh, we agreed that we'll use approach of using uh, official Jenkins Jenkins uh, Docker image uh, while doing installation of Jenkins. Um, and at least it will be in our documentation, in our official documentation hosted on Jenkins.io. 
and there were several uh, pull requests which were merged and uh, they addressed this like long-standing issue. Uh, now, there are also um, tutorial sections uh, which were trying to sync with uh, installation uh, documentation. Apparently, uh, using uh, what I found out, uh, don't repeat yourself, dry uh, principle is not quite easy in our in such complex project as Jenkins and very complex documentation. Well, uh, I guess ASCII-DOC allows to do if def, if and def, if not def kind of statements, preprocessing statements, uh, which will can address dry principle, can comply with dry principle but it will be, uh, in my mind, too complex to maintain such combination of uh, conditional statements inside ASCII-DOC. And I would be glad to hear other opinions in case there are, but uh, I found that it is much easier to separate uh, official uh, Jenkins installation documentation from tutorial documentation. Having, uh, well, two files, uh, some of them with some repeating content, but at least we'll allow ourselves to more easily maintain a tutorial section uh, without modifying installation. And another <laughs> proof of this was uh, one of the issues which we discussed in our previous meeting about uh, one of tutorials not working with the current documentation. And this tutorial was about uh, using uh, Node.js. Um, and Node.js tutorial is using port 3000 uh, to, uh, well, open uh, Node.js application and port 3000 is not available currently inside installation documentation of uh, Jenkins in Docker. And uh, we created pull request, which will address this issue specifically for tutorial documentation without affecting Jenkins documentation. Um, uh, well, this is one of the uh, well, issues about installation. Now, there are also other topics about uh, installation, about documentation, which I uh, well, can raise. One of those is the following. We're talking in our documentation about using LTS uh, releases, uh, I guess it is long-term support releases, but inside documentation lately, uh, there were several changes which are asking users to use, um, well, there is no Docker image which doesn't have LTS inside. Uh, for instance, uh, well, if we go to Jenkins.io, site I can share uh, this um, uh, this actually thing. Mm -hmm. If you can go to Jenkins.io. Mm -hmm. Or do, do you want me to go? I am sorry, I stopped sharing just assuming you would. But oh, you know, oh I see, I see. Okay. That way yeah, you sorry. can you can take us through the tour. If that's okay, Vlad. Uh, yes, absolutely. I will uh, just let me see if I can share the screen. Uh, I need to be enabled to share. Oh, oh, security, security, security. Yes, you're uh, welcome to share now. Sorry about that. Can you see my screen? Yes. 
Zoom 5.0 is here. Google. Yeah, it's... So excited. Yeah, and this is uh, this is what I wanted to mention when we go to Docker installation, installing Docker. Um, well, we're saying that it is uh, right now we're using Jenkins Jenkins Simulator long-term support release, but later we're using here. Uh, let me see. Let me see one more time. We're using this image, which doesn't have LTS. So I wanted to ask what is the opinion of uh, mm. is it okay to use a uh, image which doesn't have uh, LTS inside? Because so, there is also. Mm -hmm. So the version, so the, that's just a naming, a, a, a missing word in the label. 2.249.3 absolutely is LTS. So the mm -hmm. fact that it doesn't say LTS for me is is not harmful in this case. It's choosing to use the, the reduced size variant of the Debian uh, mm -hmm. version that we ship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because so one, of, one of the things I was thinking about doing PR is I noticed there is also 2.249.3-LTS-slim. So there is LTS slim and um, footage, oh. well, the same size of this image and this, I'm not sure. Yeah, if so if was, uh, they, they, and those would be the same exact image. So that's great. If we switch to using dash LTS dash slim, that's fine as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so it is uh, not, not a big issue, just minor thing, which I observed and which, will make more logical kind of our statements about using LTS. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I noticed your pull request mark that we are switching right now to a uh, new base, or maybe it was from a leg, Nina uh, switching to new LTS as baseline to uh, something which is weakly released right now. Not so that baseline switch of the LTS won't happen for about another three weeks. It'll be early December before we make the switch to 2.263. Mm -hmm. So, so this, if you were to change this to 2.249-3 LTS, then that's great. So long as there is that label exists, that, mm -hmm. that sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will uh, make a pull request addressing this. Yeah. Thanks. So I have a procedural question. I don't know if this happens. Maybe it doesn't. But <clears throat> let's say I'm a developer, not a writer. And I introduce a new feature. It's coming out in one of the weekly versions <clears throat> that is going to impact this procedure. And I'm a responsible developer, so I update this documentation. I see a couple of problems there. But do we, are, do we have a procedure where we can say, because I, I, I'm seeing docs that say, this is a preview feature or something like that. But then if it impacts one of our main tutorials, do we have a place where they can put that in so they get it written up while it's fresh in their minds, but the users are not seeing it as a default tutorial? Do we care? I'm not aware of a way to do that. So neither. It's, it's, or it's may, I mean, it may be a procedure of saying, you know, if it's not in LTS, don't put it in the main tutorials. That would be one, you know. Things. Well, and, and the, tutorials are, stuff. the tutorials are narrow enough that I'm not, I'm having a hard time envisioning something that would require a change to the tutorials that's not already covered by this minus minus plugins blue ocean colon 1.24.3. So that choice installs on a nice set of plugins that are compatible with 2.2, the, the version of Jenkins that's running. And, and because of that, I would expect that it will be just fine. Although, it's a good question. Let's see, does it actually know which Jenkins? I'll have to think about that. So it's a good question. We, as an example, we had a release of, which one was it? We had a release of a particular plugin that now requires Jenkins 2.263, I believe. So you, you may, we may actually already have the case you're worried about, Meg, 
it'll be interesting to to see. But it, I mean, it it seems to me, being you know a hard headed writer, that it's perfectly reasonable to say if it's not in an LTS release, do not put it in the tutorials. You yeah. can have another documentation set that's just about that feature or whatever, and you can put the information there where we can get it later. But and I think that makes sense, sense to me. Vlad, what's your opinion? Uh, yeah, um, makes sense as well. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's messing with a brand new feature like that shouldn't need the tutorial anyhow, right? They should be more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's probably you're right, Meg. It's for developers, advanced developers probably, who know what they are doing. And tutorials is more right. targeted. Right. And I suspect most engineers, if they write it down in any place, they'll write it all in one place for their feature, and they're not going to be inclined to look around and see, oh, this tutorial yeah. needs updating. So yeah, yeah. right. Well, yeah, at the, I, I think you you certainly stated that clearly. There have been long periods where the tutorials were on an unhealthily old version of something or on an unhealthily old version of this or that other thing or et cetera. So, yeah, okay. It may be a matter actually of watching PRs that come in for a new feature and say, oh, when this gets, when this feature gets to LTS and is supported, it's going to impact this tutorial. Right. Um, yeah, and actually this uh, uh, tutorial, which had issue with port 30,000, it was created uh, at least on GitHub last time modified three years ago. So I wouldn't consider it <laughs> too old, but still while uh, doing all these different phases inside Jenkins, it was reported uh, deprecated, deprecated, deprecated kind of <laughs> not very uh, uh, <laughs> good sign, but still I was glad to make it work. Do you want Mark, uh, me, Mark, to stop sharing so we can share your notes? Um, because I guess I covered this one. Yeah, so, so did we cover it? Did we cover it well enough? Uh, uh, well, this specific issue that I wanted to address with LTS, uh, and I'll make request to uh, do LTS inside this and uh, in tutorials as well. Uh, uh, well, yeah, this is what I wanted to address while talking about Jenkins and Docker, at least. Um, Super. Let me stop sharing. Yeah, and we'll just switch back to looking at the notes and... and now, while you were doing showing the demo, I realized that there is probably a change we need to make or while you were showing us that screen there's probably a change we need to make in the docker image definition that we're using that we want to put this minus w or minus minus war argument in because if i remember correctly the docker image doesn't put the jenkins war file in the usual default location it's it, it may just need some checking Vlad. thanks i'll i'll, I'll look, look at it separately and see I guess you're talking about the process of building Docker image when we right. build it. Right, yes. And I and if what what one of the things we do is we use that plugin installation manager and it knows an awful lot about what Jenkins it's using. And it's able to know even more if we tell it where the Jenkins war file is that it will be using. And but that means we got to be sure that we're telling at that location. And so I, I'm going to have to explore it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, on this subject, the um, the reusing the code, yeah, I it always sounds like such a good idea, but that's always been my experience is it very rapidly gets to the point where it's just unmaintainable. But then you have two options that and wonder which one we want to favor. Um, one is that I actually duplicate the information in both documents or all five documents or whatever. Um, the other is that I write up, it works well if there's a reference page that I have all the gory details in the reference page. And then the other places maybe have a high level part of it and say, if you want the gory details, go there and do a cross reference. Um, and it may be that we can't really set a policy that you have to do that in context for each case. 
Yeah, so I thought the reason for the, tu the, the tutorial intentionally used the step-by-step do every step in sequence and the things that are duplicated right now, Vlad, if I remember correctly, are many of those steps. Isn't that correct? That the, the step that says, how do I generate the Docker image is part of that. It exists in both the install guide and in the tutorial. Uh, if I recall correctly, this step-by-step -step guide, they don't much refer to the, uh, well, maybe I'm wrong, but I found that is fine. Right now, the only duplication I noticed is in tutorial section and in installation section. Uh, but it is partial duplication. Not all, but just very well, part which can differ. Kind of. Right. I'm um, extrapolating to other cases where this could arise. And I may, maybe mm -hmm. that's ridiculous. Maybe I need to mm -hmm. just shut up. You can send me a well, virtual. That's what we need is a virtual slap emoji on this thing. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Meg, your comments are very welcome, of course. <laughs> but I, I realize, well, um, for instance, a long time ago when I was working with databases, there is notion of normalization of databases when you reduce uh, kind of duplication of data, but it may affect performance. So usually mm -hmm. common sense is to make compromise and allow some not complete normalization like or form or whatever. Uh, and so performance will be acceptable. Uh, so I guess it's good sense maybe uh, to follow the same principle in our documentation process. Allow some duplication, not 100% compliant with dry principle, but allowing is the maintenance uh, maybe allowing people to like uh, uh, create new, for instance, tutorials, new manuals, right? right. So make it easier. Your principle of compromise is actually just a good one for life. I think mm -hmm. I like it because I well for me it was looking in case if i will implement this like completely dry principle and do this coding inside documentation after that uh, well the people who will uh, do this after me they, they will spend 100 percent of their time maintaining this code and trying to uh, make this documentation compliant with dry instead of addressing the content and uh which maybe not very productive. Yeah. Uh, well, but I'm not sure what, what you think about this. So. I, I think you've got the right balance and we let's keep talking about it because we may, we may yet find a way that isn't too burdensome and can reduce the duplication. So Meg, to show you the duplication right now, this is the underscore Docker page and this is the underscore Docker for tutorials. And as you look at it, they are the same content. Right. And content for preliminary things that are stepwise, like how do you do an installation? But then, then we get into, I forget where it was, Vlad, but it's not too far into it where we get a divergence. Right. It is a deemed run uh, Docker in Docker, I guess, section. Uh, this one, I, th I thought it was yeah, this yeah. one here yeah. that. 2376. Changes. Right. Yeah. Docker on two. Oh three, yes, seven, it's six, this one. Right. It's this line right there, yeah. isn't it? That's the one that the tutorial that the tutorial must okay. have. Right. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, and what that does is that gives access to the sample data that the tutorials need. But and since we're covering, the, okay, go ahead, Mark. After you, Vlad. Uh, just if you go a little bit, uh, I guess, since, uh, uh, no, a little bit, uh, no, a little bit up, up to the, uh, where we're running Docker Dint. Uh, since 2376, we're opening this port 2376, uh, where, uh, well, we're using this in installation, saying it's uh, optional, but this is default port for using API for Docker. Uh, uh, and 
I get as much here in case if some people would like to use API, some developers would like to use API. Currently, we don't have any tutorials, as far as I understand, which are using this port. So in the latest request, I just added port three pull request, added port 3000 to port 2376. Uh, we can, of course, replace this port 2376 in tutorials and leave it in documentation. And again, separation of files for tutorials and default installation will allow it make this kind of changes a little bit more easily. Uh, so but, I, I did not realize that. You're saying that this is actually optional. I thought that was mandatory. That's great. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. this is optional according to our documentation. Uh, and uh, well. So that's, that's where it says that, right? OK. That's fascinating. All right, well, thank you. Yeah, you're right. We need to test it more well, completely and test all different choices. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, for me, I, I'm afraid for me, this this is almost magical. It is so 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 carefully crafted. I think I understand two or three of the command line arguments, even four, but this one, for instance, I'm not sure. And many of the subtleties involved in this choice of image are not immediately obvious to me. I know why we have to do privileged and I understand how we're using network Jenkins. I don't, yeah, so there are just so many things that this is very sophisticated stuff in a very few lines. <laughs> you know, you're in the presence of genius. Yeah, uh, honored to be, yes, yes. okay. All right. Anything else on Docker changes for the official image? Oh, should we, since I brought that up, the, the two alternatives, should we just put a thing decide in context for each situation or whatever? We Very just, good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. Uh, and uh, well, one question. I'm not sure if you want to put this in the quotation mark, but I noticed, for instance, CloudBee is using different uh, approach, but they're using, of course, different images. They're using CloudBee's images, not Jenkins Docker images. Uh, so the question is, should we somehow uh, consider that approach as uh, uh, more, uh, I guess, production, more advanced, or we shouldn't, um, how it should affect decision uh, for community, which approach we use and so on. It's a good question. And I'm not, I'm not familiar with the approach that CloudBees is using. Do you want to give us an overview of it? Uh, I, uh, of course, hadn't explored. There is huge documentation for CloudBees, but I guess last time I looked at documentation of installing Jenkins with Docker on CloudBees. And of course, CloudBees is using CloudBees uh, image. Uh, they are not using two uh, containers talking to each other but they are running just one instantiating just one CloudBees um, image um, and running this image as the root. Uh, um, really? so something, something that we uh, tried, well, documented previously before. Yeah, Mark still doesn't like running Jenkins as root. I didn't realize anybody was recommending that, as, especially in a commercial product. Wow. Okay. Well, I made some comment to Jenkins or uh, to I'm sorry, CloudBees documentation, 
I'm not very much familiar how to address uh, possible issues, uh, minor issues in cloud build documentation. But I made request. I haven't checked if there is any comment on that or not. But well, and, my request addresses this. Mm -hmm. They've certainly got very smart security people. Therefore, I may just be off base by my resistance to running Jenkins as root. If they're if they're recommending running as root, it must have passed their security checks. I, I'm just I'm personally surprised. Interesting. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying, Mark. Okay. Are we sure that the security people review the installation, Doc? I, I, you are well outside my domain of expertise. Ask, it's a good question. I just don't know. Not based on my experience with many other companies, no direct knowledge in cloud bees, but I would say there were good odds that that's not happening. Could be, yeah. Yeah. It just, I would expect uh, others of their leads do review, but. It, it's an open question and it's worth worth research to find. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on Docker images, Vlad? No, thank you. All right. So we've got what's next after Hacktoberfest next. And there are major changes in Jenkins. In this case, it's now Jenkins 2.266 tomorrow. And in 2.264, two weeks ago, jQuery update has been merged. Extreme unfork has been merged. And the ACG to Spring Boot security transition has merged. So lots of changes and I wrote a blog post that um, is in code review now. Uh, hopefully we'll, there are actually two blog posts, one from me and one from Jesse Glick. Jesse's with much more technical content in it, mine with an, and an invitation, an announcement of all the changes and an encouragement for people to help us test. Um, the the changes to the plugin management page is that new is that coming out now or is that already out is that already covered in earlier blogs yeah that was blogged in blogged and we had a webinar on it in 2.235 okay so now there are, there is a new proposal there's a, a pull request just submitted by Tim Jacom not yet merged and unlikely to merge for 2.266 which apparently dramatically improve, improves the performance of one of the plugin pages. One wow. of the plugin management pages is he found a way to do something with JavaScript on the client side that we used to do in Java on the server side. And the client side is apparently much faster. Interesting. Yeah, I was, I was surprised. Okay, so this one, the blog posts, I suspect, I know Jesse's will land, land tomorrow since it's already been, in fact, it may have already landed. Let me see, I merged it today because the release is happening tomorrow. Uh, let's look and see if it's visible yet. It's, oh yes, it is, good. So there's Jesse's. Hmm. And I'm just gonna link to that. Mine has not been merged yet, so it's not visible yet. But Jesse's talks about um, that there are these new changes and their crucial payment of technical debt. We're moving off of old outdated components onto the current releases of those of similar components with a much better chance of those current components being maintained because they're coming from another organization, not us maintaining them ourselves. Okay. So Mark, write the change log today.
So Vlad, I may be looking for you to help with a code review or Meg in terms of the content of the change log. Okay. All right. Anything else on the major changes topic? Okay, we had raised a question last time about configuration as code and making it more widespread in the docs, and I don't have anything to offer there. Anyone want to, to make comments or offer suggestions? Well, how mature is it now? Is it at the point that we would recommend to production people that they might use this actually for their configuration rather than and if so, then I would think we should go, you know, for the topics of things that configuration as code covers, every all the admin stuff about how you do that should. I don't know if it just links you can also do this in configuration as code, or we should actually be showing that as the main thing and say, or you can do this in UI. So should we include configuration as code examples? In admin docs. Right. So, hey, I want to configure the following security provider, or I want to configure this or that. Here's an example. We may describe it in the UI and then say, oh, and here it is as configuration as code. Yeah. suggestion there is also jenkins configuration as code plugin or jcast uh, or jcask well maybe we can find some sections in our documentation where to address uh, how to use this jcask which may be related to also configuration as code and i believe evelyn she is very active in um kind of uh, exploring and advertising this plugin. She was nominated for um, officer position, I guess. And so she may also may affect this. Right. Right, well, uh, and there are actually a number of people. Tim Jacom, for instance, is quite, quite active in it. And he's a candidate as release officer. Several others, right. Good. Okay. Other suggestions? So, Meg, to, to answer your question on is it ready for production, I've been using configuration as code in my, in my 30 agent test setup uh, for. I think a year and a half now, and it's been great. Okay, that's, I thought it was pretty it's stable. Like but... Much, much, much better for me. It's easier, much easier to edit those XML files or those YAML files than the original XML files I had captured. Yes. Mm. All right. Anything else on config as code? Okay, next topic then, terminology updates. So I think this is still the right message. We've not, I've not seen any significant progress on further terminology cleanup. It's, it's a good candidate for a hack fest or for those kind of experiences where somebody can read through it, decide, oh, this makes sense, let's change it this way. Next question was related to May 2021 Hackfest. And for me, this one, I would just delay until, until like March or April. This 
discuss it in advocacy. I thought it was very successful last year. It went very, very well. And it's a great time period offset from Hacktoberfest. Free summer, people get interested. May I ask Mark one question about this uh, May Hackfest? Uh, last time in 2020, uh, it was related to UI. It was called UI. Is it all the time UI related Hackfest in May? It was the first time we did it last year. We've oh, never so. done anything like it before. And we did it, we did it sort of very quickly because I think the idea to do it happened two or three weeks before the event was all. And so we pushed very hard, assembled it, put something together and 50 plus contributors, very, very nice, nice work. But it was originally, I think that we, re we detected that there was an opportunity in the UI team, the, the folks like Tim Jacome and Felix uh, and Jeremy Hartley that were, that they could use some help. There was a particularly opportune moment. And so we, we launched it that and then broadened it just a little bit and said, hey, documentation is part of UI as well. And we got some really great docs contributions. Right. And I guess uh, the dark mode was one of the successful results of this May Hackfest, right. yep. or at least it was tested. Mm -hmm. It was at development and testing. It was very much so. Yeah, dark mode was one of the big wins. Uh, Docs content was another big win. Yeah. All right. Now we've got a January, I believe it was a January Hacktober or FOSDEM. So the Free and Open Source Development Conference in Brussels, Belgium. Uh, this year it will be purely online. And they're still working through what that means, how they're going to do an online conference that has traditionally been entirely on campus at the Free University of, of Brussels. And so now it'll be, this will be an interesting experience to see how their technology team does an online conference. Olivia Bernin is proposing a uh, CI CD dev room. A dev room is a concept where speakers are submit papers, proposals for a talk to present in this room and then attendees come join the room and listen to the talk. He did one last year and it was very well attended. So is the FOSDEM Hackfest, did they take one day and everybody just came into a room and worked together on it? Is that how they did that? Or? No, typically what we've done in the past is we, we, we create an event which is tied to FOSDEM, but not officially sanctioned by FOSDEM. And we'll do that the day prior or the day after. And then we invite anyone who wants to arrive, who wants to come join us to come help. Now that this, because it's all online, we don't actually have to do it with FOSDEM. We can do it whenever. But FOSDEM is a great excuse to promote, hey, come join us for a, a day of a day of online hacking or something. Right. And that, and it sounds like that model where we just set up a room and people can come in and join. Right, exactly. All right, so I don't really have anything else to offer there. Um, value in a women's Hackfest event. I, I also don't have much to suggest there. The I'm open to ideas. Have you talked to Alyssa? Because I know I'm. I attend, I watched Alyssa's section, session from DevOps World, and I thought it was very good, but I was sort of frustrated because it was all about how you ought to get in and do this, and there was nothing, if you want to do this, go do this. And I was, you know, to my view, but I'd like to know what Alyssa thought, it would be great if when they do these talks, they made a reference to this, you know, here's a place where you can go, there are, you know, all sorts of first time 
um, opportunities to contribute and a supportive, there are a lot of complaints that a lot of the tech environments are not very nice to people, which is true, but that this is a, a nice, friendly, safe environment. Um, and there's a lot of work that can be done that does not require vast technical expertise. Okay, yeah, very good. Yeah. And one uh, possible areas for this may be uh, uh, Jenkins art uh, side, and there are several uh, women contribute contributions to this side. Also, mm -hmm. Jenkins configuration as code, Evelyn, and uh, some others probably. Mm -hmm. And Meg, your contribution, of course. Well, really, but we should for all the people who are doing all this diversity work. This is a great place to refer because it really, this really is a friendly, safe. I mean, we have our our principles that require, you know, that make it a safe environment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the minority groups seem to, you know, they're nervous about getting into things unless they run up in an unfriendly environment. So, uh, I don't know. It may not. It may be too too much to do. Also, but. Yeah, see, I'm I'm wrestling with where we find the time to do any. I'm I'm a little concerned about any one of these just because the the time that I've got, for instance, to invest in in major promotions like that is quite limited. Right, that's what I kind of see it though. To maybe up to Alyssa and to the diversity team that just whenever they are doing a topic about include, you know, with a different group of inclusion that rather than just have it be something about all the problems they have, and yeah, we feel it too, is to give them a next step if you want to take another step to get more involved. Um, and that's no extra work. I mean, that would be, you know, we might get some extra faces showing up on this call or or at our next hack fest or something. It's not, you know, from our standpoint, I don't think we care that much if we have, um, you know, if they're men or women or whatever that show up, if they're ready to work, then they're ready to work. Yeah, that's All one right. that we'd make ourselves available as a resource to somebody else who wants to do the work would be my feeling, but. Great. Anything else on the topic? Okay, anything on with regard to disabled contributors, that's another one where I'm not sure what, what to do what we should do or how we might encourage or welcome people with sight disabilities or mobility disability etc any any number of suggestions i'm open i take the same who whoever i don't know who's working with these groups in jenkins or doing talks or something but i would put it back to them as just a reminder that if they want to tell them they have a safe environment that they would yeah. welcome here I think the challenge is that there isn't anybody right now that's actively approaching mm -hmm. and and yeah, I, I don't know how to fix that. I don't know what, yep, I just don't. No, and it's, we don't actually own the, I mean, everybody owns it, you know, et cetera, but, but we're not charged with solving that problem, so. I'm just Are? curious, I'm not aware, do we have something like, uh, Active search, active speech recognition, ASR plugins, or um, uh, text to speech, vice versa, uh, no. like we will enable some. Not that I know of. It's a good question. Jenkins text to speech. Considering Google text to speech and Jenkins integration, apparently somebody does. Huh. <laughs> Wow. And I, oh, I guess, I guess here's another one. I'm aware of this one, right? Which is Amazon Alexa integration with Jenkins. Mm. Oh my. Jenkins mm. plus Alexa, say hello to voice controlled CICD. Kesha Williams did this one. Oh, is that cool? Yeah, so, but I, I have done no experiment with anything. It's no. already bad enough. When I, when I mention her name in my house and suddenly devices start popping up all over the place wanting to serve me. Have you watched a TV show that has a, 
a character named Alex or Alexa or anything like oh, that? Oh, don't don't get me even into that department. That's that's terrifying. Yeah, the number of times that I get offered suggestions from my phone in the middle of another conversation. Please <laughs> stop listening to me. <laughs> Okay, anything else? All right, so I propose we call this one done. I, I will do take my action item and fix this meeting URL. Vlad, I owe you a review on the port 3000 thing and I've got a couple of other docs things that I have to review. And we've got to get this, um, the change log out for tomorrow's release. Yeah, why didn't you make that an action? Is there a reason you didn't make that an action item for yourself? Oh, no, I did not. That's a good point. That's an every week action. So Mark, right. Assemble the Jenkins 2.266. Change log. Got it. All right. Anything else? Nope. Nope. Good Thanks, meeting. everybody. Good work, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.